Yo, what is going to be with Vinny here? Today I'm going to make a new video where I'm going to be explaining my opinions on Assetto Corsa Competizione. But first of all, I should kind of explain where I've been and where the content's been in general. So, um, I've been very busy at the moment with schoolwork um, and just in general trying to sort stuff out. And I've not really been having the time to do stuff. As you can tell, YouTube was kind of cast aside a little bit. The last video I made was ages ago. It was like the Valorant video, I think. So, I've been um, kind of focusing on other stuff and then... Um, amongst Twitch streaming, I've not been as consistent at the moment, but I'm going to try and get back on the stream, so don't worry. If you don't want to go and follow me on Twitch, you can do, uh, go check it out twitch.tv slash finnygames06, um, where I'll be streaming now sim racing content and making sim racing videos, which would be pretty good. If you want me to do a, um, a sim tour, that'll probably be my next video, so uh, look forward to stay, stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button, ding dong that notification bell so you get notified every time I do an upload, which will be once every 8 to 12 months. <laughs> nah, I'm going to try and be, be a bit more consistent with my uploading. It's just quite difficult to do amongst schoolwork and that. But that's enough of me waffling. Let's get into the game. So this is uh, the loading screen you're met with when you first open the game. Obviously very cool. Um, and I'm just going to go and take, like, take you through some of the stuff that's on here. Obviously this game available on PC and um, uh, PC, Xbox One. Uh, PS4 and the next gen console, I'm pretty sure as well. Um, and in already, I, I really like this game. I'll just put it out there. I've really I put over a hundred hours into this game now, and I've had it since January. Um, but I had a few, I had a while off, which is probably, so it's probably not as much um, as you think. So let's start off in the options, and I'll just kind of show you my settings. Now my PC isn't the best, and when it comes to Twitch streaming, I have to kind of lower some of my settings. So this is what I run for when I'm actually racing. Um, for anyone who's got a bit of a lower end PC, you might want to try and copy. These settings, I know they're not the best. I know people are like, oh, I'm going to want all the best stuff. If your PC can handle the best settings and you're not streaming, or even if you are streaming, it can handle it, then go ahead and do it. Uh, my audio settings, this game is quite loud, so I would recommend changing your audio a little bit. Um, but I just changed the master down to 60 and that works fine. My controls, uh, I use a Logitech G920, so that's, this is all my controls. Uh, actually, yesterday I fixed my uh, brake pedal, because I use the clutch as my brake, because in a certain course, uh, um, when I use my brake pedal on my G920, uh, I can't get it. Even when you change all the saturation settings, you can't quite get it right. But I'll just change it to my clutch so I can press it all the way down. Um, these are my force feedback settings. These are just obviously, like, to me, um, they might be different for you. So, you know, feel free to tweak them as and when you like. All my buttons, they don't really make a difference. It, it really comes down to personal preference for you. Uh, the HUD, I've got basically everything on the HUD to default, I'm pretty sure, actually. Um, general, I, don't really, I haven't really touched any of that. And assists, I'm everything on manual apart from the pit limiter and the clutch. I should, I can do pit limiter uh, manual, but I just prefer it being automatic. I'd rather just be able to slow down than go. Oh, and I have the ideal uh, racing line because I'm a pleb. Um, <laughs> that's fine. If you use the racing line, so do I. Now let's talk about some of the game modes. So obviously down here you've got like your driver card, and this is where you can look at your stats for any races you've done. Um, Basically, anything you can look at your rating. So this game bases your ability and skill off of total ratings. So at the moment, my total rating's uh, 8,995. And these are your different kind of uh, choices. So you get track com uh, competent. Is that competent? Competent. Competent. Big brain. I Track C. Um, consistency. Car control. Pace. As you can see, mine's quite high. <laughs> Safety rating and racecraft. Now, most of the time, lobbies were based off of safety rating because uh, people don't want their drivers coming in just smashing people off the road. And this game does that really well. The one thing I will say, sometimes if you get hit by somebody, um, a lot of time it will take down your safety rating, even though it might not be your fault. So that's a bit of a, um, a downside. But apart from that, the rest of it is pretty good. Uh, in here, you've got the gallery where you can do um, highlights. Obviously, I haven't done any yet. Hopefully, I'm looking to maybe start doing stuff like that. But you can basically what you can save a race and you can watch it back. So if you do like a hour at Monza or whatever, you can watch it back and kind of tweak your uh, tweak the way you drive. So that's that. Uh, and then let's get into some of the actual game modes. So uh, we'll start with career mode. When you start up the career mode, you start in the like a Lamborghini Drivers Academy, and you think right, this this looks quite good. It looks like it's quite um realistic and as it turns out you do that you get to choose a car make your own team and then you do one season and that's it so i'm gonna put it out there if you're gonna buy this game i wouldn't recommend doing a career mode because of the fact you only do one season and that's it and it's not even like it's literally you just play for a season 
and then it, it ends and you um so i've only done 50 percent. i know it ends because i've seen youtube videos on it and that and i wanted to know if it was worth me putting all my time into finishing it um and yeah it, re it really isn't worth putting hours and hours into it just for it to end at the, uh, at the finish but the one thing i would recommend this is going to put me on to my next part as an alternative is the championship mode in here uh you are given lots of options so you get uh, it's true season i've bought all of the dlcs for um like tracks and that which means i get the uh i think is it not that one i get the intercontinental gt challenge and i get the Brit, um british gt championship you can choose pick these up you want so if you want to play the sprint race of the 2018 gt series then you can play the sprint race you want to do the endurance where you do like a six hour race or something you do that or you, uh, you can do them both or you pick quit so if i say to did, uh, did this so we go with the porsche did start i can choose every single option i want i can go right i want to have a 10 minute practice and i want a one hour one race or i want a second race it's also an hour you basically you, you tune it to how you like look the in the 2018 you get uh in the custom you get 10 races um in the i quickly show you um if you go with the endu endurance you get uh five races and it just picks them individually and it's it's really good i've been playing the championship mode a lot just to try and upgrade my pace and um it's definitely something i, I would recommend over doing the career mode um the next thing the special events i haven't actually been in here yet so i don't know too much but from what I've been told and from what I've seen, you'd basically just do a uh, a special event. You get uh, I, yeah, you just a leaderboard stuff like that. I'm not going to go too much into this because I don't know enough about it. But um, that's always there if you're interested in doing that kind of time trial stuff. Um, the single player is also very good. Um, you can basically pick from any of your tracks. Um, that you bought or that are available there's a lot of tracks available for free so don't feel like you have to come in this game and it's like pay to win it really isn't um cars i'm obviously in a 20 uh 20 season so you get uh like um james baldwin another youtuber um you get ferrari like li well, there you go there's, there's all the cars you can see my head is in the way but uh just here you can see my mouse there you got aston martin you got aldi um so yeah you get you get lots of options with lots of different liveries and teams and the cool thing is as well you can actually, if I was to say make a livery for that, you can make your own livery, add sponsorships to it. So if you are interested in doing that kind of side of it, if you've got um, your own team and you want to do online racing, you can actually make a livery for your own team, which I think is really cool. And I'm really glad they've added this feature. I think it's pretty sick. Um, but you can also go back to 2018, where I'm for some reason at Man Panorama. No, I shouldn't be. But you can, you can just go wherever you like. 2019, use a different car. Uh, gt4 pack is the one i don't have yet um obviously driving the gt4s one thing this game does have it has mixed class racing which i think is very cool as well and the british gt pack which has tracks like alton park Snetterton, and donington uh, i don't know why uh, spa is in here given it's not british but i don't know I, I don't know too much about gt cars myself i don't watch it but i would like to i definitely think it's a uh, it's worth investment uh into like watching put my time into so in the game mode you get uh practice Hot lap, hot, uh, hot lap super pole, which I haven't tried out yet, but I'm guessing that just means the fastest. Uh, hot stint, a quick race, which you can choose to be 10 minutes to an hour. Um, a sprint race weekend, where you do practice qualifying, then the race. An endurance race, an endurance race, and then you get to make your entire weekend if you want. Um, but that's all down to you. And final, um, the final area you can go into is the multiplayer, obviously. Um, Something that most people are going to be interested in doing it. Uh, so you get options. You get the quick join option. I would recommend using that. You can you can use quick join. Um, it will just put you in the first server it can that's available. Um, you get com uh, competitive, which means you actually have to have a certain amount of safety rate. And you can see you need a safety rate of 78 to do a um, competitive race. And as you can see, qualifying 10 minutes, 45 minute race, 5 minutes free practice very official and in the competitive races i've done it myself and what i've seen everyone takes them a lot more seriously um so if you want to do them i would much prefer, i'd rather do the competitive races and do the open lobbies i do open lobbies just because um i used to do them on my twitch streams just because it was more entertaining more engaging but it's very hard to get your safety rating up on the um open lobbies so i'd recommend doing a championship season maybe to get your safety rating up get really quick at the game and then go to the competitive servers because you sign up and it'll be like one hour until this race you do it it's an hour race you get a lot more for it
But if you are interested in doing the open lobby stuff, having a bit of fun, but still taking it quite seriously, um, you get, there's obviously lots and lots of servers that people run. Um, as you can see, look, there's a Nurburgring 17 out of 26 people. There's a nighttime and wet race at Monza there. Lots of different races that you can choose from, and you just go in here. And choose, say I wanted to do this one, you go in here, pick a car that's available. Uh, these are all the cars, I think, in the game that you're at. Yeah, in the game, so you can just choose um, whatever car you'd like. And then you can do that, but we're not going to be doing that. So I, I've done, um, you see, you get the little uh, thing down here. I've, d I've done the uh, open lobby races. I've won a few, and they are good, but sometimes you get that surf with the dirty drivers and that. Um, so I think the best thing to do now is actually show you a race. So I'm going to go and uh, set one up, and then I'll meet you back in the... Uh, at the track so here we are we are in the game um getting ready to do a race and this kind of leads me on to my next thing of what we're going to talk about which is setups so um as you can see you've got the get all the drivers here um and then right here you get a little setup tab so if you press that and you get met with this so if you aren't too familiar with how to do a setup yourself you get given three already presets now i would never go with the um safe preset because i just think it's too slow um, if it's in the wet, you don't have to do a wet setup. You simply click the wet one, come out, click current, and then you can edit all the wet setup as, you, as and how you please. Um, say it's dry and you want to have an aggressive setup, you click aggressive, go like that. You've got your aggressive setup ready. You get to choose um, your pit stop strategy, and you get to change everything. So much tire pressures, all this camera, caster, toe, uh, everything you can imagine on the car. Change your traction control, ABS, your uh, engine map. Uh, all your tyres, the amount of fuel we're going to load on. I know it's probably way too much, but 38. I'm going to go 1-1 one, one brakes because um, it's only a 10-minute race, so there's not really any need to do too much um, brakes. You get all, all this to do. I haven't really touched any of this yet. Um, you get all the aero. So I, I don't know too much about how to do setups. So I use the aggressive one, and then mostly I change the pressures as I'm driving, but because we're only going straight into a race, I'm not going to get the opportunity to do that. Um, but yeah, you get to set your pit stops. Um, say I want to have a wet, uh, wet um, pit stop strategy. I'll just flick it onto wet, change the pressures. But obviously, it's a ten minute race. It's not going to be any rain. So let's get into some driving, shall we? I'm going to get myself ready. Um, and I think I've got. So you have to do your ignition, start the engine, get into first gear, and let's get ready to go racing. Move my mic a bit closer. At Silverstone, very obviously historic track. Uh, and a very good one. So let, let I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a good, good race, I think. Um, we're, we're starting P10. I just did that automatically. I didn't do a qualifying or anything. Just so I can show you what the AI work like as well. So let's go. Let's wait for the green flag. Green, green, green. We're going racing. The run down to turn one. Going to get stuck you see you get the little map as well so you can see what other cars are uh, you can also look around your car as i've just shown you so i can see if he's still there or not but we're gonna be a bit careful into here cold tires and cold brakes obviously don't want to lock the brakes going in because you're just flying away and we're gonna hold this we're fighting with a bentley right now and we hold the position lexus ahead um, another cool thing is you get to also change stuff on the go. So I can go to this little menu here and I can change my pit stop strategy. It's as simple as that. Um, I like to have this open most of the time anyway, just so I can see my position. Um, I'll show you my camera settings, but when we're back on the straight as well, if you want to see them, uh, actually I'll do them now. Uh, if you say, so this is my camera settings from the, for the McLaren. Every car is kind of different with its camera settings, but uh, if you want to pause the video here and copy them, you can. Um, Another thing I need to show you in a second is you can actually check. This game is so detailed. Like, I'm on the lowest graphics, and I think the game looks pretty swag. I'm not going to lie. I think the game looks really good. Um, you can actually change the HUD. So if I want to see my brake temperatures, I, I look I change it to my brake temperatures. I can change everything in this car to how I like it. But you might be doing an endurance race and have a teammate that doesn't like that. You know, you, there's some. There's 24-hour races, 12-hour races on this game. It, it's incredible. Websites such as uh, the Sim Grid. I think there's one called RCI. I don't. I've not used that one yet. I mostly have used the Sim Grid, um, and I'm yet to do an endurance race on there. But I'm always looking to do one. 
But I kind of need a team, and I haven't got a team yet. Um, as much as I would like one. So if anyone uh, has a team and they need a driver, I'm always uh, down to down to cooperate. If you know what I mean. Um, but eight minutes left in this race. But a daytime, you can have, you do have nighttime in this race, um, in this game. Sorry. And there's wet races as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so I really, really like that. The wet in this game looks amazing as well. You get you turn, when you turn in your wipers, you've obviously got lights. You can flash people if they're if you're lapping them or if they're slower. Um, here we go. Let's get in the tire of the McLaren. We're going to go for a move. We go let's pit around the outside. Take a bit of the curb. I'm on 91 AI by the way. 91%. It's not the maximum because obviously I'm still trying to learn the game, still trying to get faster at it. But this is my overall review of the game, and uh, it's a pretty pretty positive one. I, I'm I'm absolutely loving. I keep calling it a game. It's more. It's it is the most accurate kind of sim. It's it's up there with games uh, sims such as iRacing. Um, it's, it's definitely up there as one of the best just because it really mimics reality obviously I haven't driven a, uh, a GT car before but what I've seen on TV on YouTube everything's just kind of pinpoint like all the little detail you can have is it is perfect here we go let's just try and go for the launch on the McLaren as well we're driving the McLaren we're in the uh, Jensen team rocket McLaren um, that James Baldwin drive I'm, as you can tell James Baldwin fan <laughs> but we get that move done what uh, what i've learned is it takes unlike games such as f1 where you've got um you've got all that downforce and you can just kind of throw the car through a corner and you know there's not going to be any uh any damage or mistakes with doing that this game you've got to be a lot more careful with what you do Um you've got to be overtakes aren't as simple to do although i i, I may have made them look a bit easier there um it's taken me sometimes like 20 minutes to do an overtake because they're in a faster car and I'm just struggling behind. Um, it could take a while, but it's just trying to find the moment. There's not... I, I, don't, I never really go for a mental dive bomb because I want to try and... Damage is very realistic in this as well, so much as you can have suspension damage, bodywork damage, aero damage. You name it, you can get it. Like, um, So the game really tries to mimic reality and it's damage as well, so that's why you've got to be quite careful as we lose the back end a bit there. Um, if you look in the bottom right, you can see uh, we have fuel, um, tyre pressures, tyre temps, the weather. I've got my... Uh, so you see the green bar where it says throttle and brake? So they are my throttle and brake inputs. So you can see how much I'm braking through a corner, um, how I'm braking through a corner. And you can see my throttle input as well, um, which I think is quite good. It's, it's nice to know, uh, to see that. You can also see if you're getting any uh, flicker in anything, which I fixed on my wheel yesterday, um, which was quite good. Uh, the one one complaint I would have for this game is for the wheel wheels such as the Logitech G920, the force feedback in some cars isn't really good. Um, for example, in the Mercedes, the force feedback isn't very good, and I know I can install things such as a LUT filter in that, but I shouldn't really have to do that. It should be done automatically. But in cars such as the McLaren or in an Aston Martin, front engine cars with the force feedback stronger. Um, it's, it's not an issue in the slightest. Like right now, I, it, it's perfectly fine. But it just limits the because I don't really want to drive a car that's got no force feedback. It limits my kind of accessibility to some of the cars. But apart from that, the, I haven't. I don't think got any other complaints. Everyone because it no you most people drive with wheels. I, you can drive it with a controller. Um, and I know you you can drive with a keyboard and mouse. Uh, it might not be the fastest option, but if that's the only option you have, then go for it. You know, don't let anything hold you, hold you back. You don't feel like you have to have a wheel to be quick on this game. You definitely can't. If you practice long enough with a certain thing, um, then you can definitely be fast on it. I've practiced most of my time on a wheel. So if someone was to give me a controller and say, good luck, uh, I, I'd probably be absolute dog shit. But that is just the kind of the kind of basis of it. Um, if you do, like I say earlier, if you want to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash games 6 I'm going to be playing this game quite a bit. Um... And I'm also going to be playing, hopefully, some games such as F1 uh, when the new one comes out. Looking forward to that. I've already got it pre-ordered, so I should get that uh, straight away. I should get that. I will get that straight away. Um, I would show you the pit lane. Obviously, I don't need to pit. But the pit lane is down there. Basically, it's realistic. She can get it. Stop the engine. She's stopping the little red marks. It's, it's just good. The, it's, the detail. They, they've put so much detail into this game. You know, I'm running it on the lowest settings. And it still looks incredible. I've got my shadow quality right down, but that's just 
because I can't, my computer can't handle it. But I'm still having fun playing this game, even on low settings. You, know, you don't have to have the highest end computers. If you've got a computer that can run this game, I definitely would recommend it. And if you, it's it's a good like, I'd say it's a good starter into sim racing. If you know what I mean. So. If you don't want to pay the money that iRacing might be asking for with paying for every track, paying for every car, this game um, is a base game without any DLCs. I've played for a while without any DLCs, didn't have a problem. And then I bought the Intercontinental pack. That's good. That's got tracks such as Kailami, Barfirst, uh, Laguna Seca, uh, and Suzuki. Um, a Suzuki? Suzuka. The Japan track. Suzuka in it. Um, Suzuka, my bad. Um, so it's got them tracks on it they're very good they're very fun um british gt packs obviously good i need to buy the gt4 pack still but that's not kind of on the top of my agenda right now because you can still drive in the drive in the mixed class races without the gt4 pack and i don't really have any intention to drive in them cars yet anyway if we try and pin it around the outside can't get the ferrari yet see what i mean though the ai is good um and it's difficult to make an overtake. The cars are heavier. They don't have as much downforce. Can lose grip um, a lot. Here we go. Me in the toe. Let's move on the outside. So look, I like the fact you can look over. I just think it looks quite good. Do a little bit of braking. Or oh, lose the back end a bit. Let me get the move done. I've kind of pushed him out there though. But either way, we got the move done. So let's... Let's go! So currently, P4. So let's just say leaders on the final lap, which means this is going to be the last lap of the race. But it just kind of, it's only a short race. As you can see in the top right, my safety rating has just gone green because I haven't had any crashes. It means I get, I get more safety rating the less less crashes I have. Um, but you, this is just kind of a little short race just to kind of show you what this game looks like. Obviously, all tracks are going to be different. Um, and everyone's game might look different except that you fine-tune the settings to how you feel they they are but for me this game is just pinpoint just everything just the littlest detail is so it just works so well and um yeah i, I really enjoy playing this um one thing i would like them to add in the future is tracks such as and i know a lot of people are going to say well they don't have the license to but i would love to see them add the nordschleifer into the game just because that would be absolutely hectic, a 24-hour race at the Nordschleife um, in GT3s and GT4 cars, it, it would be mayhem. But I would absolutely love it. Um, and I love that track anyway. And it would just be so sick if they added it. Um, and the ability to make a server in the game rather than having to go out and make docks for it and that. So I could just play like one-on-one -on -one with my friends and that. But apart from that, there is no complaints at all. Um... The, yeah, I'm just going to let you kind of enjoy the rest of this race. It's quite difficult to talk and, <laughs> talk and drive to like a half-decent standard, but I've tried my best, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, make sure you put the, uh, the thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. So let, let's come around the last few corners now. Now, I really should learn some more of the corners' names. I know Magus and Beckett's. Is this one called Luffield? Something like that, I'm not sure. There we go. We take the flag. A little bit of oversteer there. A second faster than my previous lap time. We come across the line in P4. So that's that race done. So we've got to wait uh, till all the cars finish. We can just press pause, but I'll let you uh, see the end. We'll, let, we'll get a bit close to some of these cars here so we can uh, see how the pack so you've got the Audi in front of us here. Uh, another very strong car. The cars always change. When they do up, they do up updates. Oh, shit. <laughs> I crashed at the end. They do updates quite frequently on this game. Um, which is good. Which means car, you don't always have one meta car. They're, it's always changing. There's always, um, little, always little differences being made that need to be made. So yeah, you can see the uh, fastest laps and all that here. See who finished where. But all in all... That is about it for uh, for my review on a Soto Corsa. So, like I say, that is the end of my review on a Soto Corsa. I really, really recommend this game uh, for the price that it is. It's definitely worth it. You get a lot of content, and it's a game that can be expanded with different tracks in the future. 
and it, it all in all it's just so so worth it there's lots of websites you can use for different racing um all stuff like that so um if you did enjoy this video like i say please hit the thumbs up button make sure you click subscribe turn the notification bell on so you get notified every time i do an update that uh, do an upload sorry um if you want to go follow me on Twitch, where most of my content is based, you can. That's twitch.tv slash finlandgames06. I have a TikTok now as well, which I'm going to try and upload more on. Um, so that's uh, my name is finlandgames06 on TikTok as well. So go check that out. And my Twitter, which is uh, twitter.com slash finlandgames06. So that was a big raffle. Um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later. Goodbye.